The Primus presents, What if Saudi Arabia covered its deserts with solar panels? Saudi Arabia is bordered by a series of beautiful towering dunes and long sand valleys. Rub al Khali, which translates to empty quarter, is southern Saudi Arabia. Rub al Khali has a land size of 650,000 square kilometers, which is bigger than the combined land area of France, Belgium, and the Netherlands. This region is also the world's second most oil rich. Al Nufad al Kabir, as the name suggests, is Saudi Arabia's biggest and most well known dune field standing over 700 to 1,000 meters. It also has a surface area of 103,600 square kilometers. So together with some other regions, that's a total area of roughly 900,000 square kilometers. Saudi Arabia generates a large portion of its power by burning oil, a method that other nations have since abandoned. Most of Saudi Arabia's power plants and air conditioners utilize 70% of the kingdom's energy, in 2013. Despite having just 30 million inhabitants, the monarchy is the world's sixth largest oil user. Saudi Arabia gets between 2,900 and 3,600 hours of sunshine due to its vast desert expanses. That is nearly three times Germany's entire amount of sun in a year. So what if we could turn all of this sunshine into energy, namely electricity? Yes, you've guessed correctly by putting up solar energy plants. Let's take a closer look. The primary goal of using solar panels to create electricity is finding a clean, sustainable energy source. The location of Saudi Arabia makes it simpler to transfer power to Europe and the Middle East. Many greenhouse emissions contribute to global warming and climate change, as do nuclear power plants, which generate trash and radioactive waste. Clean energy emits no pollutants or emissions. The desert floor covered with massive solar panels increases the area's precipitation by 20 millimeters to 500 millimeters per year, boosting plant coverage immensely in that region. The solar panels absorb more sunlight than the light-colored desert sand, reflecting a lot of light and heat into the air. As the ground temperature rises, so does the air in contact with the solar panels. The moisture in the air condenses and falls as the rain in the colder upper layers of the sky altering the world's harshest climates and expanding green zones and deserts. There are some disadvantages as well as some advantages. Sandstorms in the desert cause sand to collect on solar panels, limiting their ability to absorb energy. Dirty solar panels reduce their ability to use solar energy. Cleaning these panels may be challenging in a desert environment with little water. The generation of electrical power from solar panels in the desert is wonderful. But delivering this electricity to the rest of the world may present a significant challenge. It requires the installation of electricity lines and networks, which may be probabilitively expensive in the country. The transmission of electrical energy over long distances leads to a loss of up to 10% of energy, which adds to the expense of an already costly project. Concentrated solar energy seems to be a better alternative than regular solar panels. It uses lenses or mirrors to concentrate the sun's energy in one spot, which becomes extremely hot. This heat is then utilized to generate electricity using typical steam turbines. Some systems use molten salt to store thermal energy, enabling electricity to be produced at night. Saudi Arabia has an extensive electrical distribution network that connects all cities and towns. It has 52,000 miles of distribution lines and almost 53,000 miles of service connection in addition to transmission lines. In 2020, the amount of energy utilized in Saudi Arabia was around 289 terawatt hours. This was an increase over 2012 when the nation used around 246.6 terawatt hours of power. Desalination plants are used by the kingdom to generate electricity from desalination steam. The kingdom generates around 26,300 megawatts of electricity, of which 2,800 megawatts is desalinated. Saudi Arabia wants to use desalination plants to generate 50% of its electricity. The kingdom receives the most intense sunlight on the planet, 105 trillion kilowatt hours a day, or roughly 10 billion barrels of crude oil. Saudi Arabia has taken a number of steps to minimize its dependency on oil and expand its usage of renewable energy sources such as solar, wind, and nuclear power. By 2032, 
the government intends to invest $108.9 billion to build 41 gigawatts of solar energy. Masayoshi Son, CEO of SoftBank, revealed intentions to invest in Saudi Arabia's biggest solar power facility, which may have a capacity of up to 200 gigawatts by 2030. The Saudi Arabia renewable energy market is expected to grow at a CAGR of more than 24.2% over the projected period. The yearly increase in electricity consumption reduces the country's oil export volume and earnings. Furthermore, Saudi Arabia has set a new renewable goal of producing and installing 58.7 gigawatts of clean energy sources over the next decade, which is expected to increase demand during the projected period. However, the significant government subsidies granted to their population lower the profit margin for renewable producers, making it fundamentally economically unviable to develop alternative energy sources for consumer use in the nation, hence slowing the expansion of the Saudi renewable energy sector. Well, with that, we end today's video. Do let us know which aspect of this idea to you was the most interesting in the comment section. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That's it for today. Until next time, peace.